Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. The Cisco Meraki's MI16 was end of sale for almost 10 years and the official support ended in 2021. This means no further firmware updates are available from Cisco. Fortunately, we can install the latest version of OpenWRTs on the Meraki's MI16 and bring it back to life. In this video, I will show you the process. Before proceeding, let's be frank that the MI16 is just a humble AP with the Atlas AR7161 CPU clocked at 680 MHz. It has 16 MB of flash and 64 MB of RAM. Even though it supports 5 GHz, it is based on the Wi-Fi 4 technology. So, the throughput may not be adequate for high-performance network. This is the Cisco Meraki's MR16, let's tear it down. In order to do this, you will need a T5 TORX screwdriver. There are two screws on either end of the device which need to be unscrewed. After that, you can use guitar picks or some plastic card to pry off the back panel. There are some locking mechanisms along the side, so make sure you are not breaking it. Right, let's remove the PCB from the metal casing. We have done the disassembly process. Now, let's take a look at the documentation before proceeding. This tutorial is based on the official guide from openwrt.org. I will put the link in the video description so you can check it out. We are going to install OpenWRT 23s on it, so you can just focus on the HGS79 guide and ignore the rest. In order to flash OpenWRTs on the Meraki's MR16, we will need a set to the TTL URAT. Here, I got a cheap USB to TTL powered by the CH340 chip. We just need to connect TX, RX, and GND pins as shown in the screen. Now, let's connect the AP to the PC using Ethernet cable. The power cable is not connected because we will need to open the URAT console first. So, let's open the PuTTY application, set the port to COM4, speed is 115-200. Now, I will connect the power cable to the AP and let's see what is going on. Here we are, the AP is booting up. We need to press any key to stop the booting process in order to trigger TFTP booting later on. In order for TFTP to work, we need a static IPv4 address. Let's change the computer's network interface to 192.168.1.101, Nesmat 255.255.255.0. Let's go back to the guide. Here, we will need two files, one is the factory image, or the initial RAM disk, and the system upgrade image. Let's download it first. Let's open the TFTPD64 application and copy the OpenWRT initial RAM disk to the application folder, which is C program file TFTPD64. Now, in the URAT console, enter these commands. The first command will configure the boot address and the second command will transfer the initial RAM disk image to the AP. If you enter the command correctly, you should see the file transferring happenings on the TFTPD64 application. The file name is very long, so we can just copy and right click in the terminal to paste it. All done. Now, let's type in the third command to boot the OpenWRT initial RAM disk. So, this is OpenWRT running on the Meraki's MI16. However, it is running from the RAM and will lost after the reboot. We will need to flash the OpenWRT system image on it one more time. If you are using Linux, you can use the SCP command to transfer the file to the OpenWRT TMP directory. On Windows, I use WinSCP because it is simple. 
you can just follow my guide in order to transfer the file to the TMP directory. So, the file has been transferred to the OpenWRT TMP directory. Let's use the system upgrade command to begin the fetching process. First, let's navigate to the TMP directory with cd slash tmp slash command. And then, let's use the system upgrade n followed by the system upgrade image file name to perform the system upgrade. You just need to type OpenWRT and press tab. It will automatically fill in the file name. It is good. From the console, we can see that the OpenWRT is being flashed to the MS16 flash chip. You may be wondering how it is with of the old school MS16. Well, let's check it out. The MS16 had two radios. It supports 5 GHz but only on the Wi-Fi 4 standard. So I assume the speed will not be fast. Alright, let's config a static IPv4 address for the AP and connect it to the upstream router for testing. Connected to the 5 GHz NSID, I got 180 MPPS download and around 103 MPPS upload. Running the test the second time, the download speed is 170 Mbps and the upload speed is 126 Mbps. During the test, we can see that the CPU load is up to 65%. Connected to the 2.4 GHz NSID, I got 78 Mbps download and 80 Mbps upload. This speed is typical for the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. Alright, so that's all we got from the Mana Keys MS16. Even though the speed is slow, we can still configure fast roaming and even mesh networking with all the OpenWRT routers. In case you need a Wi-Fi 5 AP that can run OpenWRT, please stay tuned for my next video. So that's really all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.